Hi, in this video, I would like to go over a problem that can affect some 2008 24-inch iMacs. I will be going over how I fixed this issue, as well as what the cause of the problem was. So with this model of iMac, some machines may be affected by an issue whereby the backlight fails to turn on. In this case, you would hear the iMac start and you would be able to see an outline of what should be on the screen, but the screen itself would remain black. So first off, if you are having the same problem, make sure the brightness is up. If adjusting the brightness doesn't help, grab a torch and with the machine on, shine it into the screen. You should be able to see a dull image of whatever is supposed to be on the screen, such as your background picture. To further test the iMac, you can use a mini DVI adapter to connect it to an external screen. After verifying that you do in fact have a backlight problem, you are going to need to test the voltage on a connector inside the iMac. I have linked an iFixit guide in the video description. This will give you in-depth instructions on how to remove the outer case from the machine. You will start by removing the glass, followed by the metal frame. To do this, remove the 12 screws securing the frame to the rear case. Then gently lift the front bezel from the top edge. Once the top edge of the bezel has cleared the rear case, disconnect the microphone connector and pull the bezel away. Once the bezel is taken off, the computer will look like this. With the LCD screen attached at the top and a portion of the logic board exposed at the bottom. At this point, you are going to want to test with a multimeter to see if your graphics card has the same problem as this one did. To do this, turn the computer on. Stick the positive probe from the multimeter onto the back of this connector. You want to test the third pin from the top on the row that's closest to you. Then stick the negative probe on a grounded part of the computer, such as this part of the screen. You are now going to measure the voltage here. If you see zero volts or a small voltage measured in millivolts, then you have the same problem. If the voltage is 3.3 volts or anything around that, then your graphics card is sending the on signal to your backlight and this repair isn't for you. Before you attempt this repair, it's probably best to get a basic idea of what's actually happening here. Do note, for the purpose of explaining this, I have removed the screen. I recommend you don't remove the screen as it is not required for this repair. However, if you do wish to remove your screen, perhaps to install an SSD, do take care as the power supply is located here. Whenever the computer is plugged into an AC outlet, this power supply board is live with 240 or 110 volts. So if you are working on the computer with the screen removed, please unplug it first. Okay, so basically, in normal operation, whenever the screen is meant to be on, the graphics card is actually signaling the inverter to turn the backlight on. It does this by giving 3.3 volts to the inverter board which is located on the back of the LCD screen. The 3.3 volts travel from the graphics card through a trace on the logic board, through this connector, through a wire in this loom, through this connector, through a trace on the power supply, then through a wire in this cable to the inverter. The inverter has 12 wires going to it from this cable. Five are ground, and five are positive 24 volts. There is one that tells the inverter to adjust brightness, and there is one that tells the inverter to turn on. The problem with this machine was that the graphics card was no longer sending the 3.3 volt turn on signal to the inverter. So simply, everything for the backlight was actually working, but it just wasn't being told to turn on. The solution is to just send 3.3 volts to the inverters turn on circuitry from a different source, therefore bypassing the graphics card and its issues. After many hours of work, I found the best place to get this power is from one of the diagnostic LEDs, specifically LED4. 
I couldn't get power from just anywhere, as I only want the backlight on when the screen is on. Luckily, LED 4 specifically comes on when the LCD screen is communicating with the computer. Basically, when a video signal is being generated and sent to the panel, the LED will be on. Meaning, if I tap into here for the new backlight trigger signal, then the backlight will still be off when the computer is sleeping, as well as when the display is sleeping. The voltage to this LED is, however, only 1.8 volts. It's not the original 3.3 volts. However, this 1.8 volt signal does appear to be enough to tell the inverter to turn the backlight on. So now that you have an idea of what's wrong and how the workaround fixes the problem, let's get started. Please understand that this repair requires soldering to a very small SMD component. So I recommend watching some YouTube videos on soldering techniques and practicing if you believe your soldering skills are not strong enough for this task. I am not responsible if you break anything or somehow get hurt. Please shut down and unplug the computer before attempting the repair. For the repair, I used wire out of an old IDE ribbon cable, and I used the camera on my iPhone to zoom into the small LED area to double check my soldering work. First off, cut the wire out from the connector that you tested earlier. This is the row closest to you, and the third wire from the top. Next, solder your extension wire to this wire and protect the join with heat shrink tubing or electrical tape. Route the wire to the diagnostic LEDs and cut it to length. Now solder the wire to the bottom side of LED4, between the LED and the resistor. Plug the computer back in and test if the backlight turns on. If you are successful, turn the computer back off and put a little hot glue over the solder join to help support it. You can now put the computer back together, making sure to clean any dirt or fingerprints from the LCD screen or the back of the glass.
you should now have a successfully repaired iMac. Well, that about wraps it up for this video. I hope it's been of some help to you. If it has, I would love to hear about it in the comments. If you found the video entertaining, please give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Thank you for watching.